Hello everyone, welcome to techtoot.com. In this lecture, we are going to understand serializability. Okay, so before we go ahead, let's understand the whole picture. We have multiple transactions. Okay, in one transaction, we have multiple operations. So let's in one transaction we have multiple operations so I'm writing it read write read write read write write read something like this okay now one idea is that what we can do is we can execute these transactions one by one okay one by one so when we execute transactions one by one Basically, it causes serial schedule. So we are scheduling these transactions to execute one by one serially. Okay. So first, all the operations of transaction T1 will execute. Okay. Followed by that, all the operations from transaction T2 will execute. Okay. So this is serial schedule. Okay. We are serially executing both the transactions. Okay. But it has some disadvantages. The first one is that it restricts our concurrency okay so we'll write it second disadvantage is that it can cause cpu waste so let's say when transaction t2 is executing this transaction t1 is executing okay so the idea is that when all the operations of transaction t1 will be executed okay or finished then I'll start T2. Okay. Meanwhile, when this read operation is executing from transaction T1, this read operation is basically input output operation. It doesn't need CPU much. Okay. So when it doesn't need CPU, still the CPU is busy because we cannot allocate CPU to transaction T2 as we are restricted by restricted by serial schedule. Okay. So once T1 is finished, then CPU will be given to C T2. Fine. So here CPU is waiting. Okay, CPU is ideal, and that's why it causes CPU waste. Fine. And the third disadvantage is that let's say this transaction T1 is very long. So it is like so many operations is had. Let's say thousand operation it has, and this is having only four four operation. And if it is scheduled like this serially, okay, then until this whole thousand operation is executed t2 will not get chance to execute okay and although it doesn't require much cpu much time but still it has to wait so we will write so smaller transaction may also need to wait long okay so this is the third disadvantage we are talking about serial scheduling okay one by one we are scheduling each transaction so the idea is to execute multiple transactions parallelly in interleaved manner okay so when we talk about executing multiple transactions parallelly then these operations from multiple transactions need to be scheduled and this gives us an idea of non serial scheduling so this was all about serial scheduling now we have non serial scheduling so in case of non serial scheduling what do we do when we have transaction t1 and t2 okay we have in transaction t1 let's say i have uh, r1 w1 and here i have r2 w2 okay now i am intermixing these operations while executing okay so these transactions we will have overlapped execution but these processes will execute one by one so i can schedule these processes like i can have r1 r2 w1 w2 i can have r1 w1 r2 w2 okay so again this is serial of course now we can have r2 r1 w2 w1 we can have r2 r1 w1 w2 okay so similarly we have already seen these things now as 
these processes or these operations can intermix in their execution so there is a chance or there is a fair chance that we can get incorrect result okay incorrect result fine it means that when we are going for interleaved execution of transactions when we are going to going for parallel execution of transactions then in that case we can also get incorrect database state or inconsistent database state okay or incorrect result so we also need to be careful in that case there comes serializability in picture that serializability helps us to check whether the output of certain schedule is correct or not okay so how do we go for it so serializability stands for checking correctness of schedule okay fine now what is serializability actually so what do we do let's say we have various number of schedules now among these schedules we need to identify which are incorrect okay so what do we do for that basically we understand that these schedules are not serial so let's let's pick a schedule from here okay so i'm going to pick this so it's r2 r1 w1 w2 okay and this is one schedule okay now to check serial serializability what do we do we compare this schedule with a serial schedule okay so if this schedule is equivalent to if this schedule is equivalent to some serial schedule okay then we say that this schedule is serializable okay so among the given schedule okay if some schedule is equivalent to serial schedule then we call that schedule as serializable so to write this formally we write a schedule s of n transactions is serializable if it is equivalent to some serial schedule okay of the same n transaction okay so let's say we have this schedule as i explained here so this schedule is serializable if it is equivalent to some serial schedule okay we already know this is serial so some serial schedule then we call this schedule as serializable okay we can serialize this schedule fine now when we say this word equivalent we have already studied various types of equivalent okay so depending upon the equivalent type of equivalent we will have conflict serializability we don't talk about uh, output centric serializability that is result serializability conflict and view okay so if this schedule is conflict equivalent to some serial schedule then we call it conflict serializable schedule and if it is view equivalent to some serial schedule then we call this schedule as view view serializable schedule okay so depending upon the equivalence we are talking we call it serializable okay so let's understand conflict serializable in next lecture and so far if you have any doubt you can go and ask your doubt on tech2.com thanks for watching